Well, service learning courses, they're courses that seek to broaden the student's understanding of the material in a class by working with a community partner. The students learn by applying theories that they've learned in the, in the classroom to a real life problem and the community gets some benefit, some product that the students gain. This class is looking at the uh, environmental impacts of dam removal. So there was a dam removed a few years ago from the Eight Mile River and they're looking to see what environmental impacts that might have on the stream ecology, on the environment after the dam was removed. We broke into groups and we drove down to Salem, Connecticut. Some people went to which pond annex, the pond upstream from the pond that I worked at. Um, my group went to Zemco Pond. So we went out there and we hauled the what are called peat cores. So long metal shafts and with blades essentially on either side that you just stick into the marsh and twist them around and pull them back out and you have a record of the marsh over time. When we were out in the field, it was good to see how to actually take these different types of cores using different equipment, you know, learning how to gauge like if you can walk on the ice, you know, in order to take an ice core from a pond. We had to draw a map and mark where we were taking our cores from, and then we hauled everything back to the vans and brought it all back here. And then, so we'd lay out the cores on the table and we'd take out samples for every five centimeters or so through the depth of the core. The students are looking at the sediments behind where the dam was and they're looking mainly at two things. One, is there a release of nutrients or metals? Then the other aspect is can we use those sediments as an archive? So the idea is that we can go back in time and figure out what was going on at that site before the dam was put in, while the dam was there for a hundred years or so, and then after the dam was removed. If you remove the dam and they did it improperly, there would be a flood of sediments coming downstream. So we were trying to see if there was a change in the sedimentation at that site. My part of the project is to measure the phosphorus sediment from the ice cores and the fiber cores that we took. We are trying to find out how much biogenic silica is in it, we're trying to see if there's still the same level of silica as another part of the river where there wasn't a dam. We're doing mercury analysis on each of the individual segments to see how mercury concentrations in the marsh have changed over time. My group is also looking at stratigraphic sections. So we have drawn diagrams of all the cores. We have pictures of all the cores in segments that we've, we've just stitched together in Photoshop so that we can see the variation through the depth at different places within the marsh. Um, and we'll try to come up with some sort of a story on how all that happened. Here we get to use the centrifuge, we get to use the different equipment and like I feel like I'm, I have, I'm getting the opportunity to, to learn. It's like a lot more exciting than like me having to go through a procedure and then write up about it. Even though a lot of people have already done it and nobody's done what, we, what we're doing today. Oh my god! Awesome! <laughs> wow. That's nice. so cool. So we're actually like getting our own materials and then we have all these like all this equipment that's different and everyone's doing something different. The majority of our experience with the project will actually be in a couple weeks when we give our final presentation. Connecticut currently has more dams per mile of waterway than any other state in the United States. To combat these anthropogenic effects, Nature Conservancy has designated 21 sites as preservatives of these wildlife areas. The Zumco Dam uh, that we studied in particular uh, is a privately owned structure recently purchased by the Nature Conservancy. Now that the dam is gone, studies like ours focus on the geologic changes that in turn affect flora and fauna ecosystems and help provide a better understanding of river recovery after dam removal, guiding future restoration projects um, around the Northeast and the entire world. For our study, to study the sediment of the area, we took peat cores and from these cores we were able to analyze the um, the mercury and lead concentrations. Phosphorus is an essential element in biological activity, such as uh, sustaining the life of plants and uh, terrestrial species. Its relative concentrations can tell us the source of organic matter that would have metabolized the phosphorus. And understanding of this element in samples allows us to determine environmental conditions 
in the water, such as oxidation reduction state of the water, biota identity, and trophic state. In the last um, PCOR, we see something more interesting sort of happening, where in the far past, there was a uh, much higher ratio of carbon to phosphorus. And then somewhere around this time period, uh, there was something that caused a rapid decrease. And I know for some of the cases, they've used our um, studies as a stepping stone. So this is a, a sort of a seed money or a seed beginning study to say, hey, this is an interesting problem. Here's some data. Now can we get the full-blown research done? And, or uh, it, it often helps for state funding. So they can put it in a proposal to clean up this lake and say, hey, Wesleyan did this initial study. Maybe we can get further money to do more advanced things that we couldn't do in this one semester.